This week is all about texture, and today we're painting with found items around your house that could be used as painting tools, but aren't really supposed to be painting tools. So this is another treasure hunt for around your house. So let me give you a couple of ideas of things that you can find that you can paint with. So there are no paintbrushes today. That's the only rule. And maybe ask your parents before you paint with it to make sure it's okay. So I have some Q-tips, which are great for making dots. I grabbed some cotton balls. There's this cool brush I have in my kitchen and I use this to paint pans with oil or butter when I'm baking. Um, and so you might have one of these brushes in your kitchen. Make sure you ask your parents before you use paint on one of these. I have this reusable chopstick um, that we have in our kitchen that we can wash, but I could use this to write or draw painting with. Um, a fork, a spatula, a feather, and lastly, I'm gonna show you real quick how to make a paintbrush using some paper. And this is just a random spare piece of copy paper that I have in my house. So some other things you're gonna need once you find all of those tools to do painting, you're gonna need white paper to paint with, some paper towel and water to clean off your painting tools and make sure you don't make a mess on your table. Make sure you're wipe, working on a wipeable surface or on a mat or some sort of tray. And then I'm going to be using tempera paints today. And I grabbed paints all in the same color family of green and blues because they mix well. But you can use whatever colors that you want. Okay, artists, are you ready to start painting with some non-traditional painting tools? Let's get started. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is show you how to make a faux paintbrush out of this white paper. So all you're gonna need is a pair of scissors and I'm gonna cut fringe on one side of this. Now you can make this as big, uh, like wide or thin as you want. Um, making the fringe skinnier or wider will give you different results. Now you can get a piece of tape to hold this together, but I'm only going to be using it for part of my paper and then I'm not saving it, it's going in the trash. So I'm not going to use a piece of tape to hold my brush together, but you always can. So now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna roll my paper up. So all I'm gonna do is I'm folding it over and I'm gonna roll kind of like in a tube. And that's gonna give you this little fringy. Now you can put your piece of tape here and that would hold it together, but I'm only gonna use mine for a second. Um, and then I'm gonna try and use some of my other painting tools. So. I'm just making the ends a little bit more splayed out and I'm going to grab some paint on here. I don't want to soak the whole thing and I'm going to use it, see what it does. That looks really cool. Um, I don't want to drag it because I'm looking for texture here today and I'm not really, this is a practice painting of just working with new mediums. This painting isn't supposed to look like anything specific. Um, usually with a paintbrush we drag, but today we're looking for texture, so I'm not gonna do that. Okay, so I'm done with this, so I'm gonna set it aside. Now I'm gonna get a cotton ball, and I'm gonna get a new color, and dip the cotton ball in the paint, and now I'm going to put it on my paper. Well, I really like this texture. Um, it's like really soft and kind of fuzzy. Um, I'm gonna grab another cotton ball and I'm gonna dip it in a different color and kind of add on top and mix those colors. That looks really nice. Okay, I'm using a fork and I'm gonna dip in the paint. I'm gonna create like a line design. I really 
like that. It's like an easy way to do some straight lines in your artwork. Sometimes those can be so hard to paint. This is an easy way to do it. Okay, and I'm gonna put that in there because that's a fork we actually use in our kitchen. All right, so here's a feather and I'm gonna dip this in the paint and I'm going to press it down. Okay, so now I'm gonna try the other side See if it gives me a different texture. Not really. Okay. It's got some nice wispy lines that are kind of cool. All right. Now onto my silicone baking brush. I'm gonna dip that in the paint. Ooh, look at that texture, that's great. This is, um, this is a reusable chopstick. And it makes really good dots. Doesn't really drag the paint so well. But again, all that matters here is that you're practicing and you're trying out new ways to paint. A great idea is to go outside and find some things in nature, like sticks or leaves or rocks. They might be fun to paint with. All right, my next one is a Q-tip. And these are great. We love using these in the art room for perfect dots. They just make amazing dots and you can use it over and over again and get lots of dots. You can even turn it around and use a different color so that you're not mixing the colors up. And that is a Q-tip. All right, my last one is a spatula. And so what I was thinking is I could dip my spatula in the paint and that I could put it down and I could drag, yeah, look at that, drag the paint on my paper. So all I did was dipped it in the paint, not a ton of paint here, put it on my paper and drag the paint across. Look at that. I could even layer here and now put dots inside. Look at that. So all you're doing here today is practicing and working with different things around your house as paintbrushes that aren't normally used as paintbrushes. And today's all about practice and trying to create different textures on your paper. All right, artists, I hope you like this. I can't wait to see what you do with it. Have a great day. Thanks for arting with me. Bye.